Hello classmates. Today let's learn something about urine concentration and dilution. Urine concentration and dilution is very important. When body fluid osmolarity is reduced, the kidney can excrete urine with an osmolarity as low as 50 microosmosis per liter. Conversely, when extracellular fluid osmolarity is high, the kidney can excrete urine with a concentration of about 1,200 to 1,400 microosmosis per liter. There are two basic requirements for forming a concentrated or diluted urine. The first is the controlled secretion of ADH which regulates the permeability of distal tubulars and collecting ducts to water. The other is a high osmolarity of renal medullary interstitial fluid, which provides the osmotic gradient necessary for water resorption to occur in the presence of high level of ADH. Active transport of sodium chloride happens along the ascending thick limb. It does this mainly by actively bumping out salts in the ascending limb. This creates some very salty interstitial fluid in the medulla. So when new filtrate comes down in the descending loop in front of it, water passively flow out and into supersalted interstitial space. Since most of the water is picked up by the blood pretty quickly, the saltiness of the interstitial space doesn't get diluted. So it can keep drawing water out of the next batch of filtrate in the descending limb. Let's watch a video to see how the loop of Henry works. Besides, the urea recycling also plays an important role, even though we think of urea as a waste product. The kidneys actually need it. The loop of Henry, DCT, and collecting ducts are impairable to urea, while the salty passively draw even more water out of the collecting duct. Some urea passively leaves the urea as well, make the medulla even more salty, and in return, more effective at drawing out water from the ascending limb a few steps back. This urea diffuses into the thin loop of Henle, and then passes through the distal tubulars and it finally passes back into the collecting duct. So there's essentially a traveling blue of urea that escapes the urine and finds its way back into the loop of Henley, then runs the whole course back again to the collecting duct. The recirculation of the urea helps to trap the urea in the renal medulla and, contrib and contributes to the hyperosmolarity of the medulla. Countercurrent exchange in the vas rector plays hyperosmolarity of renal medulla. Plasma flows down the descending limb of vas rector becomes more hyperosmotic. Because of diffusion of water out of the blood and diffusion of solutes from the renal interstitial fluid into the blood, in the ascending limb of vas rector, solutes diffuse back into the interstitial fluid and water diffuses back into the vas rector. Large amounts of solutes could be lost from the renal medulla without the U shape of vas rector capillaries. With the action of ADH, the draw of distal and collecting ducts could form concentrated or diluted urine by transporting the water. ADH triggers the cell to move the water channels they have in storage over to the apical S side, which allows more water to leave the urine. The permeability of luminal membrane to water increases. The picture shows the formation of a concentrated urine when ADH levels are high. Note that the fluid leaving the loop of Henry is diluted, but becomes concentrated as the water is absorbed from the distal tubulars and collecting tubulars. With high ADH levels, the osmolarity of the urine is about the same as the osmolarity of renal medullary interstitial fluid in the papilla, which is about 1,200 
micro osmosis per liter. So the major factors that contribute to the build up of solute concentration into the renal medulla are as follows. Active transport of sodium ions and co-transport of potassium chloride and other ions out of the thick portion of ascending limb or loop or Henle into the medullary interstitial. Active transport of ions from the collecting ducts into the interstitial. Facilitate the diffusion of urea from the inner medullary collecting ducts into the medullary interstitial. Diffusion of only small amounts of water from the medullary tubulars into the interstitial far less than the resorption of solutes into the medullary interstitial. Okay, this class is over. Thanks for your listening.